Muslim family, welcome to another edition of the Black Learning Channel. My name is Ras Marvin, and I will be your guest teacher for this afternoon, October 8th, excuse me, November 8th, 2014. And do remember to tell a friend to tune in to the Black Learning Channel dot ming dot com every Saturday morning. And the first hour we heard this morning, Sister Amira Aman. And she talked a little bit about Mike Brown. She talked about relationship, what happened recently that's heard on the news. And uh, thank you for sharing that story with me, Sister Mary, because that's the first time I've heard that uh, the grandmother and the mother had a problem. But as of always, you did a beautiful job this morning on the first hour for the Black Learning Channel. My name is Ross Marvin, and I'm the president of the Dr. Judith Nairi CDPM UNIACL Atlanta Division 421. And also, I'm District 5 Commissioner, and we work out of the UNIA CDPM office here in Atlanta, Georgia, where I am broadcasting to you from this morning. And uh, we want to thank you for joining the Black Learning Channel. Today we're going to focus on math, and we're going to focus on some of the things that you as an elementary student should know by now. School started for some of us in the South in August, if you're in the North, probably started September. But now we've had two good months of school since school started. And we're going to review this morning the things you should know when it comes to mathematics as an elementary student. And what I have in front of me is my notes from my school, which is Pearl Academy here in Atlanta, Georgia, Pearl Academy Math and Science Institute, and we also do agricultural and many other things at the school. For more information, you can visit the website, Pearl Academy, www.pearlacademy.org. So this morning, we're going to focus on basic things you should know. And one thing you have to understand about math is organization. Math is organization. And every day I start my class, and every day we start class here, those who are taking notes, make sure you have your notes organized properly. By having your notes organized, that will automatically increase your grade in math and in school overall. So. You title your page on the first line, on the top line of the page, you title the subject, math. And you make sure that also on the top line you have the date, November 8, 2014. So that's what you have to make sure you do every day in school. And it's good to have a binder. A binder helps you keep your notes organized because you may take your notes one day on a separate sheet of paper or you might need to take out notes out of your binder and you'll be able to put it back in with no problem. So parents, it's a good advice for you to make sure that your child have a binder and you can have many more than one subject in your binder. Okay, the first thing that our elementary students should know is that they should know their place value. Okay, the place value is in numbers. Say if we take the number 150 decimal point 1. Okay, so as we know where the decimal point, point is in a number, and remember, if you don't see a decimal point in a number, the decimal point is at the end of the number. Okay, so looking at 150, and then the decimal point, and then we have a one after. Let's count the place values going to the right of the decimal point. The first place value 
to the right of the decimal point is called tenths, tenths, plural, tenths, okay? And then the second place to the right of the decimal is called the hundredth, hundredth. And that's spelled H-U-N-D-R-E-D-T-H-S, hundredth. And the tenth place is spelled T-E-N-T-H-S, tenth. Okay? So the first place to the right of the decimal is called tenth. The second place to the right of the decimal is called hundredth. And the third place to the right of the decimal is called thousandth. T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D-T-H-S. Thousandth. And then as you go to the right of that decimal point, which is the fourth decimal place to the right, that is called the tenth, ten thousandth place. Ten thousand. And the fifth place to the right of the decimal is called the hundredth. 100,000th place, 100,000th. And then the sixth place to the right of the decimal is called the millionth, millionth, and we spell that M-I-L-L-I-O-N-T-H-S, millionth place. And then it, the pattern repeats again. Then you have 10 millionth, 100 millionth, and then you have the billionth. So that is the name of the decimal places to the right of the decimal. And it's very important in knowing the name of the decimal places because in order to speak the numbers properly, you got to know the name of the decimal places. Now let's go to the left of the decimal place. So we're looking at the number 150.1 and to the left of the decimal place, the zero is in the first place to the left of the decimal, decimal place, and that's called the ones, O-N-E-S, ones place. And then the second place to the left of the decimal is called a tenth, T-E-N-T-H, tenth, tenth, T-E-N-S, tenth, the second place to the left. And the third place to the left of the decimal, we call that the hundreds, H-U-N-D-R-E-D-S. And the fourth place to the left of the decimal, that place, is called the thousandth. And the fifth place to the left of the decimal is called the ten thousandth. The sixth place to the left of the decimal is called the hundred thousandth. And the seventh place to the left of the decimal is called a millionth. And then the pattern repeats again where the eighth place to the left of the decimal is ten millionth. Then the next place is hundred millionth. And then you have the billions. And then you have the ten billions. And then the hundred billions. So you got to, as an elementary student, know your place values when it comes to the numbers. You have to be able to identify whatever place the problem is asking for. And in math and science, they ask questions based upon the vocabulary word. So each place value is a vocabulary word, and you got to know what place it is and what it represents. Thank you. And that's our little review on place values. We had touched earlier upon it here on the Black Learning Channel, but we had to review it. So now, next, what you should be able to do, from once knowing your place values, you should be able to name or say numbers properly. Say if we just had a 150, then the 1 is in the 100th place, the 5 is in the 10th place, and the, w the 0 is in the 1's place. So that number is just set as 150. But say if you had a number that had a decimal point, right? So we say 150.1. How you would say that number is that most people, when they say a number like 150.1, that's what they'll say. They'll say 150. Point one, But as an elementary student and as a math student in school, you've got to know how to say it properly in the scientific terminology and speaking proper math and science. So how you'd say 150.1, you'd first say the number in front of the decimal. And that number in front of the decimal is 150. 
and then when you get to the decimal point you use the word and okay so that's 150 and and then you say the number to the right of the decimal which is 1 and then you say the place value and that place value is 10 so let's look at how you would say properly as a scientist or a mathematician the number 150.1 you would say 150 and 1 10 okay 150 and 1 10 so you'd say the number in front of the decimal when you get to the decimal point that's the only time you use the word and in saying a number never do you use the and in saying a number in no other place except for when you get to the decimal point and then after that you say the number to the right which is 1 and the place value which is 10 so 150.1 said as a scientist or a mathematician is 150 and 110. Let's look at if we had 150.01. How would you say that number? Okay, you use the same methodology. You say the number to the left, which is 150. When you get to the decimal point, you use the word and. And then you say the number to the right, and that number to the right is 01. So it's just number one, because you never say a zero in front of a number. So it's 1, and the second place to the right of the decimal is the 100. So that number will be said 150 point, no, if it's written 150.01, it's said 150 and 100. Okay? So how you'd say the number 2.22, that will be 2 and 2200. You say the number of the last place, which the 2 is in the last place, and that's how you say that number. Now let's review adding and subtracting decimals. Okay? The secret to adding and subtracting decimals is that the problem could be given to you horizontally, like 2.1 plus 3.2. So what you gotta do is you gotta line up the problem vertically and line up the decimal points. And when you add and subtract decimals, you have to line up the place values, okay? So if you're taking 2.1 and you're adding it to 3.2, you'll write 2.1 on top and then 3.2 right underneath. And line up the decimal points and line up the tenth place and line up the ones place. So when you add those two numbers, 2.1, and plus 3.2 the 1 plus the 2 is 3 and you bring down the decimal point and the 2 plus the 3 in the front so that answer will be 5.3 or 5 and 3 tenths okay and the same goes for subtracting decimals so when you add and subtract decimals you got to make sure the decimal point is lined up vertically in the problem and sometimes when you subtract numbers, you have to regroup. So the same thing goes for decimals too. Y you cannot take a big number away from a small number. So if that's the case, you will have to know how to regroup. And that means you borrow a number from the place to the left. And then uh, go ahead and subtract. So that's what you have to be careful with when it comes to adding and subtracting decimals. This morning we're broadcasting from the UNIA CDPM office here in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, it's a beautiful day in Atlanta, Georgia. Sunny, but a bit cool. I would say it's long sleeve and jacket weather and even long johns weather if you have it good to wear. But it's a bright sunny day outside and it's going to be another beautiful day in November. So as we continue with our program for this morning, we covered so far place values and we covered how to say numbers and words. Make sure that you ha are able to also write numbers and words, okay? You write numbers and words the same exact way you say it in words, okay? so. 
extension and saying that scientifically that will be 2 and 1 tenth so exactly like how you say it's 2 and 1 tenth that's exactly how you spell it T-W-O and A-N-D 1 O-N-E tenth T-E-N-T-H-S so that's how you will write that number in words how about a number like 75.39 how would you write that number in words because as an elementary math student you have to be an expert when it comes to numbers not only when you first learn about numbers you learn how to count but now as an elementary student you have to know place values you have to be able to speak the number properly and you have to be able to write the number properly. What I tell my middle school and high school students that in math, you gotta be able to speak math, you gotta be able to write math, you gotta be able to solve math, and you gotta be able to listen and know the words of when math is spoken to you, okay? So all those things that you think it's for English. It also applies in math and science. Okay? So we're looking at the number 75.39. How would we write that number properly in words? It wouldn't be written 75.39 because remember, you cannot say point in saying a number properly. You have to use word and when you get to the decimal. So how we would write the number 75.39 in words it's spelled S you first spell 75 and that's S E V E N T Y F I V E 75 and then you write the word and because that's where you get to know the decimal point A N D and then you write the word 39 T H I R T Y N I N E 39 and then you have to write the place value of the last number, the 9. You look and see what place value the 9 is in, and that 9 is in the second place to the right of the decimal, and you know the second place to the right of the decimal name is 100. So you then you would have to write, after you write 75 and the word 39, then you would have to write the word 100. H-U-N-D-R-E-D-T-H-S. And that's how you would write that name, that number properly, 75 and 35 hundred. Okay, let's look at another number, and then we're gonna just to make sure that everybody got it, gets it, and understand. Now we're gonna look at the number, a simple one, 9.8. How would we say that number? Scientifically, we wouldn't say it 9.8. That's how the majority of society says it. But if you learn it now, how to say the number as an elementary student, then you will know it when you get to middle school. You will know how to say that number when you get to college. And also, university and in the real world. If you learn the principles and the laws of math from now, they will never change and they'll hold for the rest of your life. So that's why it's very important now as an elementary student to know numbers in every aspect, as we would say as adults, in 360, de degree, 360 degrees, that mean a full circle, no matter which way you look at a number, you know everything about that number. And as you continue to take math in school, you learn more and more about numbers. So. Looking at the number 9.8 and where we want to make sure that everyone knows how to speak numbers properly and to write them properly. That's been our focus now for the first half of this program. So how you would say 9.8 properly, you say the number in front of the decimal and then when you get to the decimal you say the word and and then you'll say the number after the decimal and then you'll say the place value of the last digit of the number after the decimal. So let's say that becomes 9.8 becomes 9 
and eight tenths. Nine and eight tenths. And if you know how to say numbers properly, you will have no problem writing numbers. So to write the number 9.8, you write it exactly as you speak it. Scientifically, that is. So that becomes 9 and 8 tenths. Spell so it would be N-I-N-E, then you write the word and, A-N-D, and then you write the word H E I G H T, and then you write the place value that H is in, which is tenths, T-E-N-T-H-S. So that's how you would say and write that decimal number properly. So make sure, as an elementary student, you master, you got to master your place values. You got to be able to master how to speak numbers properly. Because in the real world, that's how you're going to get the numbers. If you hear some numbers on, on news and they're telling you 11 and 30, 35 hundredths of the people, 11 and 35 hundredths said they like this. You got to know exactly what number they're talking about. So you got to be able to hear the words and convert it into numbers. 11 and 35 hundredths. So that's 11.35. Okay. Multiplying and dividing decimals is a little bit more complicated. And we're definitely going to look at that in one of our later programs, how to multiply and divide decimals. Okay. The main thing you want to remember, uh, I can just give you a little hint right now. When you're multiplying decimals, like if you had uh, 0 0.1, times 0 0.1 the, the, the first point 0.1 or we'll say it mathematically scientifically you wouldn't say 0 0.1 you and you wouldn't say 0 in front of a number you and then you if there's no number in front of the decimal you don't have to say the word and so you just say the number to the right of the decimal and the place value so 0 0.1 how that's said mathematically or as a scientist that's said as one tenth. That's the number to the right of the decimal and the place value, which is tenth. So if we had one tenth times one tenth, so you can uh, visually see it, we're talking about 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. So we all know that one times one is one. So the bottom line, we're going to get a one because those are the no only numbers being multiplied. There's a zero there, but that's going to leave you with nothing. So what you do now, once you, you multiply the number like there's no decimal point, 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, and you multiply it without the zeros in front, so you get 1 times 1, and then you count how much places are in the two numbers that have been multiplied. In 0 0.1 or in 1 tenth, the decimal is one place to the left, and same in 0 0.1 again, it's one place to the left. So if you add the number of places, you get two place values when you multiply those two numbers. So when you get the answer now, you got to move your decimal place two places to the left. So when you got the answer, one times one, that's one. And the number that t the decimal point is to the right of one. So now we got to move it two places to the left. And once we move the decimal places two places to the left in the number one, we get the number. 0 .01, 0 .01. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 equals 0 0.01, or to say it properly as a scientist, 1 tenth times 1 tenth equals 1 hundredth. 1 hundredth. So that's the key when you multiply decimals. You have to make sure you count how much place values are in the numbers that are being multiplied. Okay? And the t y y from the total amount of place values in the two numbers that have been multiplied, and the total amount of place values, that's how much you would have to move the place value in the product, the answer to what you multiplied, the number you multiplied, and you move those, uh, move the decimal point to the left in the answer, and you should be able to get that answer exactly right in multiplying decimals. Dividing decimals, you got to make sure that when you divide decimals, 
you have in the denominator a number that is not a decimal. So it's always okay to move the decimal point in the divisor and the dividend. Okay? But whatever you move the decimal point in the divisor, you have to move it the same amount in the dividend. So I will have in upcoming programs, I'll be able to demonstrate multiplying and dividing decimals. For us, I think uh, we have our blackboard, our blackboard here, so I might be able to show you, show it to you today. So let's go ahead and continue. So we covered decimals, place values. Also, we covered adding and subtracting decimals. We briefly touched multiplying and dividing decimals. Now let's cover rounding numbers. You got to know how to round a number because not everything that is done in world needs to be perfect. You have to be able to estimate and estimate estimation is a skill that you have to know as an elementary student. They could give you two numbers times each other. 53 times 69. If you know how to round those numbers, you can get an estimate, estimate, a good estimate of what 53 times 69 is. So le now let's look at rounding numbers. When you round a number, what you do, you have to know the place value for the digit that's in the number. So, if we're taking 53 and we're multiplying it by 69, looking at 53, the 5 is in the 10th place. The 3 is in the 1 place. So, we're rounding this number to the 10th place, okay? 53 is closest to what 10? I know everybody can count, count by 10s. Let's count from 10 by 10 from 0 to 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So therefore, when we're rounding the number to the 10th place, that could o the only answer that we could get is either 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You can't get a number like 21 or 77 because that's not a number based upon the tens. So when you round the number to the tens place, you have to get something in the order of that has a zero in the ones place. That's the key. When you round it to the tens place, you have to have a zero in the ones place, the answer. Okay, so let's look at it. So we're rounding 53 to the nearest tens place. The three is in the ones place and the 5 is in the 10th place. So when we're rounding it to the 10th place, what we do is we look at the place to the right of the place we're rounding it to. The, the place to the right of the place we're rounding to, we're rounding it to the 10th, is the 1's place, and the 3 is in the 1's place. We look and ask ourselves that this question. Is the value of the number to the right of the place we we're rounding to, which is the 1's place, is that 5 or more? And the answer is no. That is 53. Uh, that is a 3. So since it's not 5 or more, what we do is we do not round up and we just make the 3 a 0. So therefore, we keep the 5 the 5. So the nearest 10 to 53 is the number 50. And that makes sense because 50 is only 3 away from 53. Compared to if we use 60, 67 away from 53. So a better estimate for 53 rounded to the 10th place would be the number 50. Okay? And then we'd have to round off 69 because the problem is 53 times 69. 
And by now knowing how to round numbers, you can get a good estimate of what the answer is. So what we do now, we look at 69, and we're going to round out 69. So we're rounding to the 10th place, and the 6 is in the 10th place, the 9 is in the 1th place. So we ask ourselves this question. We look to the place to the right of where we're rounding, which is the 1th place, and we ask, is that number 5 or bigger? And we know that the 9 is in the 1th place when you're looking at the number 69, and it is 5 or bigger. So if it's 5 or bigger, then we go to the place that we round into, which is the 10th place, and the 6 is in the 10th place, and we increase it one value. So now that becomes 7 in the 10th place, and 0 in the 1th place. So 69 rounded off to the closest 10th, that would be 70. 53 rounded off to the closest 10th, that would be 50. So now we rounded off those two numbers and we have 50 and 70. So everybody knows your five time tables. And if we take five times seven, the first two digits of the numbers 50 and 70, we get 35. And there's two zeros. There's a zero left from the 50 and there's a zero left from the 70. So we take 35 and we add those two zeros to it and we get 3,500 or 3,500. So therefore, if you take 53 and you times it by 69, it's approximately equal to 3,500 by our estimate. Now I'm going to take out my trusty calculator and I'm going to check how well we did with our estimate. We're taking 53 and we're timesing it by 69. Our estimate said that that value was approximately 3,500. The actual answer is 3,657. And that is a pretty good estimate. We came within 157 off. We were in the ballpark. So that's one example of why you would know, need to know how to round numbers. Okay? So let's review again how to round numbers. We round numbers. We first have to find out what place value we're rounding the number to. And we look to the right of that place value and we ask ourselves, is this number to the right of the place value we're rounding to, is that 5 or more? If the answer is yes, then we're going to round up one digit the place that we're rounding to. If the answer is no, it's less than 5, then we keep the place value that we round into the same and we make sure that we add a zero in the place to the right. So that's a little bit of rounding numbers, something else that you need to be an expert in to be a great A student as an elementary math student, you'd have to be an expert in rounding numbers. And now as we go to our next topic, prime numbers. What are prime numbers? What are composite numbers? You got to know that too. And it's not difficult. Prime numbers are numbers that can be only divided by one and itself. Let's look at the number, for instance, 11. What times what equals 11? The only thing that you can tell me, or I can tell you, that times something times something that equals 11 is 1 times 11. Okay? So that's one characteristic of prime numbers is that prime numbers, only 1 and itself can go into it. So the only two numbers that can go into 11 is 1 and itself. Let's take another number. Let's take 17. What two numbers times each other equals 17? Well, the only two numbers I can think of is 1 and 17. No other two numbers times each other equals 17. I should say no other two whole numbers times each other equals 17. So 17 along with 11 is a prime number because only 1 and itself can go into it. Can we think of some more prime numbers? Of course. One is not in the running, okay? 
one is not a prime number, so remember that. One is out of the realm. But the first prime number is two. Yes. And what's special about two as a prime number, two is the only even number in the world that is a prime number. Because the only two numbers that can go into two is one and two. Nothing else. Okay? But the rest of the prime numbers in the world are odd numbers. So after two, the next prime number is three, because only one and three can go into three. The next prime number is five, because only one and five can go into five. The next prime number is seven, only one and seven can go into seven. The next prime number is eleven, then you got thirteen, you got seventeen, you got nineteen, you got twenty-three, and so on. Think of, as you count up numbers, think of what two numbers can multiply to equal these two numbers. And that's how you get your prime numbers. Now what are composite numbers? Composite numbers are numbers in which more than one number can go into. Okay? More than two numbers. More than the number in itself. So we can look at number four, for instance. Um, not only one and four can go into four, but also two can go into four. Let's look at ten. Not only one and ten can go into ten, but also two can go into ten. Two goes into ten five times. Also five can go into ten. Five goes into ten two times. So numbers where more than just one in itself can go into it, those are called composite numbers. Composite numbers. And most of the numbers in the world are composite numbers. So as an elementary student, you got to know the difference between a prime number and a composite number. Shall we review? A prime number only has one and itself that can go into it. For example, 29. No other two numbers times each other other than 1 times 29 can go into 29. So therefore, 29 is a prime number. Can you think of some more? Okay, okay. And a composite number has more than just one in itself can go into it. Let's look at the number 30. One can go into 30. One goes into 30 30 times. Or 30 can go into 30. 30 fits into 30 one time. But other than that, 2 also fits in 30. 2 goes into 30 15 times. If you take 2 times 15, you get 30. Also, 3 goes into 30, 3 goes into 30 10 times. If you take 3 times 10, you get 30. Also, 5 goes into 30. 5 times 6 equals 30. And the number 6 goes into 30. So you see a number like 30 has a lot of numbers that it can go into it or is, uh, is divisible into 30. So therefore, 30 is a composite number. And that's the difference between prime numbers and composite numbers. And you got to know what factors and multiples are as an elementary student as we go on to our next topic. Factors and multiples. What are factors? What are multiples? Can you count by twos? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Can you count by fives? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Can you count by tens? Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. Can you count by 100? 100, 100, 200, 300, 400? Well, these are called multiples. So the first number, like for instance, if we say 2, the multiples of 2 are 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay? You understand multiples now? What are the multiples of 10? Multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and so on. Who can name the multiples for thousands? If you had said 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, you are correct. So, you see it ain't difficult. It's not difficult. You understand now what multiples are. Next, we got to look at factors. You remember we just talked about 30? and we talked about all the different numbers that can go into 30. These numbers are called factors. So one factor of 30 is 1 times 30 
so you have two factors there two numbers that times equal another number another factor of 30 is 2 times 15 so you have two more factors there 2 and 15 factors of 30 but that's not all you have 3 times 10 is another factor of 30 the 3 and the 10 plus you have 5 times 6 so factors are two numbers that multiply together to give you another number okay so it's kind of reverse from multiples and you as an elementary student to be an A student must know this take it from the rocket man we kind of out of season now because the weather turned cold and I had to put up the rocket but definitely expect in the springtime we will have a program on the high flying rocket and I'll be introducing it to our students here at the Black Learning Channel. So tell your friends to tune in to the Black Learning Channel every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon where we have our first host holding it down for the first hour on the Black Learning Channel, Amiri Aman. Amir Aman. Along with, on the second hour, we will either get Secretary General Mary Bolter or Assistant Secretary General Sister Brenda, Brenda Clayton. So both of them is on the first and the third Saturday of the month. Tune in to those educators coming out of the city of Chicago, Illinois. Right now, Ross Marvin, the rocket man, is in the city of Atlanta, Georgia. We're, we're here at the UNIA CBTM office. I want to say greetings to the ninth successor of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, the Honorable President General Senghor Joar Baye, and also to our first lady in the UNIA CL government, the Honorable Kathy Ingrid Hull. As we continue this morning, so far we covered place values, we covered how to say a number, we covered how to write a number, we covered adding and subtracting decimals, we briefly touched on multiplying decimals, we covered rounding numbers, we covered factors, and we covered multiples. So we've gone through several topics this morning and we're still not finished yet. I want to bring you one more topic before we close for this morning and I'm just going to touch a little bit on fractions. Fractions? You say you don't like fractions? Oh, you say you love fractions. You didn't like it, but you love it. I understand. I love them too. So we're just going to review the names of fractions and the different types of fractions. And you got to know this as an elementary student. You got to know if the teacher say you have an improper fraction. You got to know what an improper fraction looks like. First of all, what is a fraction? A fraction is the ratio that has a numerator on top, a divide sign in between, and a denominator on the bottom. So the top of a fraction is called the numerator, the bottom of the fraction is called the denominator. So whenever the denominator, which is the bottom, is bigger than the numerator, that's called a regular fraction. A regular fraction, for instance, one half, one divided by two, or one over two, that is the fraction one half. What if we had three over seven? That's the fraction 3 7. Okay, 3 is in the numerator, numerator, 7 is in the denominator. Now, what, what if you had a fraction in which the numerator is bigger than the denominator? You got to know that name of that fraction. And if you said the name of that fraction in which the numerator is bigger than the denominator, like for instance, no, 7 over 3, that is called an improper fraction. Okay? And that word, the improper fraction, will always hold for the rest of your life. Whenever you see a fraction and the numerator is greater than the denominator, that is called the improper fraction. 
So we looked at a regular fraction, which the denominator is bigger than the numerator, and we looked at an improper fraction in which the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Now sometimes you can have a fraction and a number together. Yes, that's right. A fraction and a number together. What is that called? When you have a fraction and a number together, it's called an improper fraction. So you might have a one in front of one half. You will say that one and one half. Okay. So when you have a number and a fraction, you call that a mixed number. It's mixed because it has a whole number in front and a fraction right next to it. That is a mixed number. In future programs, we're going to look deeper into fractions now that we got uh, our TV is broadcasting live on the Black Church Learning Channel TV. Now that we got our TV program working, expect greater, greater, greater programming because uh, if you didn't know, we have a small blackboard right here behind the UNIA flag here at the UNIA office, and we have our bigger blackboard over here. So next month, the second Saturday in December, make sure you tune in because I will be giving you classroom demonstrations on our board here at the UNIA CBPM office. And tell your friends and invite them to listen to the Black Learning Channel. Okay, so right now you're ready to take your first exam from today's lesson. On the first exam, I'm going to ask you to round numbers off. Do you know how to round numbers off? Then I'm going to ask you to write numbers properly. Spell the spelling of numbers properly, including decimal values. I'm going to ask you what is the name of the seven place values to the left of the decimal? What's the name of the seven place values to the right of the decimal? You got to know all of that. I'm going to give you certain numbers and I'm going to ask you to say the number as a scientist or as a mathematician. You have to be able to speak numbers properly. I will speak certain numbers to you and you, after hearing the number, you would have to be able to write the number properly. These are all the things we covered today. Say if I gave you two decimal numbers to add, you will have to be able to add and subtract decimals properly. In addition to, you should know how to multiply and divide decimals. So after this program, the rest of our program, I will have examples for you so that you'll get more than just listening to me speaking about, but I'll be able to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Also, if I was to give you a quiz or exam on today's lesson, you would have to be able to tell me what's the difference between factors and multiples. You would have to be able to find several factors for a number. In addition, you would have to be able to tell me what are the multiples of 6. Can you count by 6s? 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Yes. If you can count by 6s, then you know the multiples of 6s. You would have to be able to subtract using regrouping. Some students may say borrowing. Whichever, you'd have to be able to know to do it. And you have to know when to apply regrouping or borrowing. I would also ask you, what is a prime number? Name five prime numbers. Name ten prime numbers. What is a composite number? Name five or ten composite numbers. What's the difference between a prime and a composite number? All these things you should be able to explain from tuning in to this program and listening live to the Black Learning Channel on the Black Learning Channel dot Ming dot com. Heard every Saturday morning live. 
and definitely tell it to your friends share it with the family that the black learning channel is live every Saturday morning and you could also tune in during the week just in case you miss the, pro the live programming from Saturday you can tune in anytime during the week because the black learning channel is 24 7 365 and when from tuning in you will be able to listen and watch the previous broadcast we're coming down to the end of our program we have two minutes left in our program want to thank you for joining us this morning I want to thank uh, sister Mary Amon for doing such a great job on the first half of the program this is Ross Marvin signing out I'll be with you again <laughs> this is fun, my brother. Okay, okay, so it, as long as it helps, that's no problem. That's what we're about, helping out and things. How was the audio on the video? great sound great brother Delaney so we'll talk soon I'm gonna stop the recording now no 